Hello and welcome to Brass Tacks in what has been a dramatic day in Haryana. Manohar Lal Khattar, the incumbent chief minister who's been in that post for the better part of more than nine years now, in a dramatic fashion today tendered his resignation. And that too, just six months before the Vidhan Sabha election, before the state is due to go to polls. In his place, Nayab Singh Saini, who is the BJP MP from Kurukshetra, also the state party president of the BJP, he has now been appointed as the new chief minister. Uh, a large number of the members of the cabinet have been re-inducted into the cabinet. One critical change that has happened is the alliance between the BJP and the JJP, which is Dushan Chautala's party, that has snapped. Now, apparently, there's a lot of speculation doing the rounds, but apparently the reason why it snapped was because the JJP was insistent that they be given at least two Lok Sabha seats to fight in the upcoming election. That was not to be, and that's how this alliance snapped. But the bigger question is, is this something that will be advantage BJP? Because remember, last time around, the BJP swept all 10 seats, all 10 Lok Sabha seats in Haryana. Will it be in a position to do that again, this time in a divided house where it's the BJP versus the Congress versus the JJP in effectively what could be a three-cornered contest? But all of that and more in just a moment. But first, the story of what a dramatic turn of events it's been today in Haryana. ईश्वर की शपथ लेता हूं लोकसभा में कोई संकट नहीं है दस की दस सीटें भारतीय जनता पार्टी जीतेगी क्योंकि सभी इंडिपेंडेंट साथी वैसे ही खड़े हैं सभी साथी मुख्यमंत्री जी के साथ मोर देन अनहोली आई मीन अनहोली ऑफ कोर्स बिकॉज and the kind of things which were said uh, about the BJP by JJP at that time. But the second part is that it was an alliance of convenience. Alright, so what is behind the churn in Haryana? The current scenario, this is how the Haryana Assembly looks like right now. The BJP seems to be in a relatively comfortable position despite, of course, the breakup with the JJP. The floor test will now take place tomorrow. The BJP on its own has 41 MLAs. Six independents are backing the BJP. There's also Gopal Kanda of the HLP party, the Haryana Lokhit party. So that takes the tally effectively to 48. So in a 90-member house, 48. 45, remember, is the halfway mark. So the ruling combination, as it were, has three more than the halfway mark. Now, on the other side, you have the Congress, which is sitting at 30, the JJP, which is at 10, of which, again, the BJP claims that at least four JJP MLAs are in touch with them. Will there be a vertical split in the JJP? We'll have to wait and see. The INLD has won and there is one independent. So that only adds up to 42. So clearly the numbers as they stand today are in favor of the BJP and it's unlikely to change, not least because you have Lok Sabha elections in a couple of months and you have the Vidhan Sabha elections in less than six months in the state of Haryana. So will there be too much dramatic change and horse trading in this picture? I suspect not. But what is interesting is I want to go back all the way to the 20. Uh, 19 Vidhan Sabha results. Remember, the Lok Sabha of 2019, which happened in April, May, the BJP swept, so it was a sea of saffron. All 10 seats, all 10 Lok Sabha seats were won by the BJP. But the Vidhan Sabha election, which happened six months later, this is what the returns were. The BJP was down seven from the last time. They came down to 40. The Congress had 31. The JJP had 10. The others eight. In INLD won. Uh, Ahmadmi Party zero. So out of these others, six independents have backed the BJP and that's how this government came to pass. But I want you to focus on the pink areas, which is the JJP strongholds and the blue areas. 
this is the pink areas are of course around the hisar jeend that belt and then the blue areas are around rohtak sonipat panipat that belt so the reason why i'm highlighting these two areas is because this is the jhat heartland as it were if the congress once again as it is expected to project the hudas as their sort of chief ministerial face if it were and if there is some kind of sympathy if, if at all there is for uh, dushan chotala and the jjp then will the jats once again consolidate around the congress or around the jjp like they did last time around uh, which is why the bjp's numbers were vastly reduced but on the contrary the non jat population is much higher the jat population in haryana is just about 15 16% whereas the non jat population is much more than that so will the non jat uh, population which for the last two elections 2014 and 2019 has backed the bjp will they continue to consolidate around the bjp remember mr khatter was not a jat chief minister he was the first non jat chief minister of haryana mr saini who's now replaced him is also an obc he's not a jat so one non jat chief minister being replaced by another non jat will that send a signal to the bjp score voters which is now effectively in a state like haryana the other obc voters will they consolidate around the bjp that again will be at play for the vidhan sabha election maybe not so much for the lok sabha election because of course uh, uh prime minister modi's image his work and the kind of uh, impact he has had uh, the vote that he gets on his own will of course uh, be far different from the situation as far as the assembly is concerned but in the assembly will these caste dynamics how will they shape the future haryana assembly post the 2024 vidhan sabha election that is something to watch out for but for now let's talk about what exactly happened in this partnership of the last 4 years why did it snap between the bjp and the jjp siddhat yadav a spokesperson of the bjp mohan kumar mangalam spokesperson of the congress party hemant athri senior journalist joining us and professor sanjay kumar is co director with lokniti and csds uh siddhat yadav you say that you know india alliance is not coming together all allies are betraying them one after another nitish kumar others so on and so forth but looks like all is not well in your house as well sir jjp which was a big ally of yours in uh, haryana for the last 4 years now you are no longer allies with them uh no i think first of all what has to be understood in the context of haryana is that we formed the government twice in the state of haryana the first time we were there independently we did not require any support for the second time we fell short of a few seats and that is when we required the support but despite even if jjp gives the support or not gives the support we had the support of the independent candidates also of the hlp and we had the enough number we had the mandate to go ahead but we bharatiya janata party went ahead to in a coalition government shared the government with the uh, jannayak janata party and were successfully running the government for four and a half years our motto was to serve the people of haryana to no, solve no, so the what happened after haryana, four and a half years to give an what alternate what happened kuch to hua hoga after Nay, absolutely. And after four and a half years, when we have come down to this and elections are approaching, I think the ones who have left should be asked this question: Why they have left? We were there. We made them join us. We we worked with no, them what, for four and a half years. What do you mean the ones who, who have left? For Dushan some did not leave your coalition. The chief minister went and resigned. That's how the government uh, ceases to exist. Dushan Chautala has not sent a letter saying he is uh, walking out of NDA or walking out of the Haryana government. no he he has absolutely and uh, that is why after that uh, the entire government all resignations from the cabinet had to be done and new government had to be formed you are saying uh, the dushan chotala has conveyed to the bjp leadership that he is not interested in this alliance hemant atri is vehemently shaking his head hemant atri jaka <laughs> bhai once there was all this was no he has you know, but jaka bhai once this was being you know planned in a particular way hmm. you know dushan chotala was sitting with jp nadda in delhi can you imagine at that point in time once haryana government was planning mr manohar khatri and his colleagues cabinet colleagues they were planning to resign en masse and the preparations for the new swearing in was were there yes from yesterday night in the rajbhavan no no but at what happened hemant bhai what what happened that for four and a half years you've been in a coalition kuch to hua hoga that Zakha dramatically khatri sahab goes and resigns 
and then somebody else is appointed as chief minister look at it is simple more as simple as that see bjp and jjp but they were post poll alliance yes they were not for parliament alliance right yes after the parliament was the bjp scored 10 out of 10 then there was an assembly election in october 2019 correct bjp fell short of some seats that's how they were forming their government with the help of independents as the bjp colleague rightly said but what happened was mr dushan chutala without being requested through mr J- apna anurag thakur he went to amit shah and offered his unconditional support to him bjp took that support in lieu of that there were huge ministries almost eight of them were given to the jjp and a few other ministers one more ministry now what happened was once this parliament election came this parliament election once it is approaching now bjp was you know already having 10 seats jjp started <coughs> asking Excuse for me. two seats one is hisar from where dushyant chutala used to be an mp at one point in time in 2014 yeah. and bhivani mahindragarh seat where is ajay chutala used to be an mp during chutala saab's chief ministership now you tell me one thing once you are having 10 seats of your own hmm. on your own why will you offer two seats to me that's very simple question i am a post poll ally why would you offer that is point number 1 number 2 jjp has a support base of jats bjp's complete jo uh, politics is all about don jats once there were on good terms the alliance kept on going the moment jjp started asking for two seats that was the difference basically okay How can so this you are saying this whole alliance has come uh, undone because of two seats okay let it's me ask mohan kumar manglam mohan kumar manglam this is this is politics rajneeti mein to ye sab hota rehta hai some allies want more seats if they don't get it they leave it's happened to you also mamta banerjee has fielded all 42 candidates in bengal uh, the left in kerala has already announced uh, uh, candidates for all the seats so ye to hota rehta hai what what, what is the big deal at the end of the day the government is still with the bjp in haryana zaga i think they've changed the chief minister merely to try and stave off the massive level of anti incumbency that this government in haryana is facing you know the outgoing chief minister the ex chief minister now mr khatter used to say that the identity of haryana is associated with jawan kisan and pehlwan and all three sections have been you know done massive injustice against by this government we saw what happened with the female wrestlers we've seen what's happened with the agni veers and we've seen how farmers have protested and how they've been treated by this government so this changing of the chief minister 6 months before the assembly elections is merely just an attempt to try and reinstate their image try and reach out to the public again which should be to no avail whatsoever no no but one one i'm sorry i'm interrupting but this not, formula this me, model sure, go ahead has worked for the bjp in the past in gujarat they changed the chief minister before the last election uh, they won in uh, uttarakhand they changed the chief minister before the last election they won so this seems to be a formula that's working for the bjp why do you think it's not working i think in uttarakhand and gujarat they didn't change it once they changed it multiple times and just because it's worked in those particular states doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work here and that the social coalition that they used last time is still intact and is going to continue to vote for them i'm just saying look at precedent what's happened in the last four and a half years in haryana with the main constituents who said to be representing haryana how they've been treated by this government they have to look beyond social coalitions because these large you know sections of society have definitely been treated in a manner that nobody would want to be treated like by this government okay. so they're changing the government's face and saying that okay we're going to work differently we're going to treat you differently but it's not going to work i wanted to no. say also so, as far as the jjp is concerned yeah. they can choose to go with whoever they want i don't think even if this is a ploy to sort of split the vote three ways it will work in the coming assembly elections if they believe that their coalition will be intact and the jjp will split away jat votes and so because of a three way fight they'll come out ahead i don't think that will work no, no, either you, because they are overarching issues are, here you are that well within that. you are well within your right to invite the jjp to be part of the india alliance nobody is stopping you from doing that but be that as it may i want to i want I to ask said we would yeah, yeah i want to ask uh, professor sanjay kumar you know the the whole politics of jat versus non jat which effectively in the last 10 years uh, in haryana it's really taken a, a, on a new dimension by changing one not non jat chief minister and replacing him with another non jat chief minister and thereby this coalition with the jjp coming to an end 
and all of those things that uh, that Mr. Mohan Kumar Mangalam just said, the wrestlers or the farmers, all of these other problems which are associated with the Jat community. Do you think the BJP has negated that by changing the chief minister or those problems continue to remain? Because I keep going back to the Gujarat example, the Uttarakhand example, where the anti-incumbency was against the local leader, in this case the chief minister, when they changed the chief minister, they managed to buck the anti-incumbency. Or does that not apply in Haryana? Uh, no, Zaka, the three problems which you mentioned, I don't think by changing the chief minister, BJP has been able to resolve uh, the three issues of you know, the Pahlwan, the Kisan and the Jawan. Uh, people still seems to be a little unhappy with the how the state government has functioned. But I think the more than the state government, people were unhappy with the sitting chief minister. So I think BJP is trying to, you know, present a different image to the people of Haryana that, you know, the government is there, but they are trying to rectify it, rectify some of the misdeeds which the previous government may have indulged in. Uh, they are not saying that, that there has been some misdeeds by the previous government. But trying to send out a message that then there is a new chief minister, there is a new cabinet minister. Uh, this they are not aiming to mobilize the jat. Uh, I think the if you look at the politics of uh, BJP's mobilization, not only in Haryana, if you look at how they have been able to penetrate among the non-dominant OBC caste in Bihar, if you look at you know non yada OBC, they have been able to make huge inroads. UP they have been able to make huge inroads among the non yada the OBC. So in Haryana also the politics is very clear, leave aside the Jats, don't try and make inroads among the Jats which is going to be much tougher for them compared to trying to mobilize the non jat OBC caste. And they are again sending out a message by putting up a, Saini, a chief minister from Saini caste that look this is the party which cares for the non dominant OBC caste. Uh, but by doing this I don't think they are able to convey very clearly that the government that the three issues has been resolved or government is very very sincere in resolving these three issues. I just want to go back to the magic wall and, and explain to our viewers you know the reason why we are talking so much about the Jat versus non-Jat fault line uh, as far as Haryana is concerned because the politics of Haryana up until 2014 was dominated by the Jat community. So if you go back to the 2019 Vidhan Sabha election and look at the uh, Jat dominated seats there you will see that of the 30 seats, 30 out of 90, so about a one third of the seats are Jat dominated. It's the Congress that had the maximum number of seats. This is in the Rotak, Panipat, Sonipat, that belt in the eastern part of the state. And then the JJP had six uh, out of the 10 seats that the JJP won. Six seats were in Jat dominated seats, including in the belts of uh, Sirsa, Jeend, etc. The BJP had nine seats. But not so much in this belt, they had it in the southern part of the state, in the Mahindragad belt and of course here uh, one seat in the Kurgaon, Faridabad, that belt. But really the reason why this is important is and more so in a Vidhan Sabha election is because a third of the seats are dominated by the Jats. Having said that, even in 2019, despite the Congress getting and the JJP getting a higher share in the Jat dominated seats, overall it is the BJP that ended up as being the number one party albeit short of majority, but number one party nonetheless because it was able to pick off the seats that are non-Jat dominated, not so much in the central part, but in the southern part, in the western part uh, and of course in the northern part of the state and that's how the BJP managed to turn the whole fault line in its advantage uh, because the consolidation of non-Jats happened uh, against the Jats. But Siddharth Yadav, all of this may be applicable to a Vidhan Sabha. Right now you have a Lok Sabha election within you know, within a few weeks, dates are going to get announced perhaps by the end of this week, maybe early next week. At this juncture, to change a sitting chief minister, in fact, if you go back to the Uttarakhand and Gujarat examples, the sitting chief minister was changed almost a year before the elections, not two weeks before a Lok Sabha. So, my question is, what signal does this send out to your voter, to your carders and also to the opposition that, look, First of all, I would beg to differ from the fault lines that you were highlighting about Jat non Jats. For the Bharatiya Janta Party, we take the Chhatis Biradri of Haryana all together. Our agendas are different. We are working for pro-development, pro-progress. And we are working for every region of Haryana, for every community of Haryana, each and every person of Haryana. 
uh, when it comes down to saying that we put our weights on the non jats i don't think that is the case because just before uh, naib singh saini's uh, state presidentship uh, we had the last president from the jat community the last president from that also from the jat uh, community we have just sent uh, uh, our leader uh, to rajya sabha last month he belongs to the jat community that is not the case for us uh, the congress party or any regional party in haryana can probably be focusing on that or particular region or a particular community but the agendas are different for bhatiya janata party point number 1 hmm. point number 2 when you say that uh, if the change has happened it has to uh, imply that there was something wrong i don't think that is the case because for a cadre based party like ours uh, change is constant changes do happen changes changes have happened in different states at different times uh, changes happen according to our strategy we ran a very successful government for 9 and 1/2 years we are not, the baton has now being passed to a more younger uh, face to a younger okay. leadership a new series of changes pro development pro progress is going to happen in the state of haryana and there's nothing more to it apart from this the so, people of haryana have realized they already know uh, that this government has been working for them and they also know that this more, change is more, more for the benefit of the more, more people of haryana Malam, uh, again the point that the bjp spokesperson is also making is that while the congress and jjp and other parties in fact rahul gandhi's entire bharat jodo nyay yatra has been around caste senses but the bjp has come up, ca- come around and completely appended traditional caste dynamics and caste politics as you know it zaga i mean i'm not even sure what you mean when you say that because you just spent the entire show talking about how they are dividing people along caste lines and trying to benefit electorally from the same let me just say that there's another angle here where, you know the reason they took in the jjp and you see how the bjp spokesperson vehemently denied that they are ignoring jats is that because they wanted to have a representative from the jat community and now that they're probably getting rid of dushyant chautala they've got his grand uncle ranjit chautala to take oath again and will probably replace him as deputy chief minister there's another trend here that's kind of interesting which is the bharatiya janata party seems to revel in dividing chacha and bhatija whether it is maharashtra mr ajit pawar and sharad pawar whether it is uh, uttar pradesh uh, akhilesh and his uncle whether it is bihar with chirag paswan and his uncle you know they move beyond dividing society along religious lines to so not dividing chacha and bhatija in the same family okay uh, uh hemant atri is is that the case uh, that at the end of the day we are reading too much into this whole jat versus non jat they simply uh, trading one chotala for another no no zakai it's not like that see haryana is certainly for sure it's a caste based society there is no doubt about it and the whole politics revolves around it now there are two small corrections once you said there are jats jats are only 15% in haryana i'm sorry they are 23.5% that's a small correction number two the chart that you were showing that is something very interesting to be told in this context you showed haryana particularly rohtak area rohtak panipat sonipat and this area this is basically congress bashan that is right but do you know one thing manohar lal khattar serving nine and a half years chief minister is basically from rohtak district he is not from karnal while being chief minister yeah. for full 5 years his whole native wealth was swept by congress don't please forget it now there is a one small addition also mr naib saini who has been made chief minister he is a one time mla one time mp he rose from a clerk and steno with mr narendra modi once he was general secretary in charge haryana in 96 97 do you know one thing his wife the sitting chief minister who is here today nayar singh saini his own wife lost a jila parishad election in her home ward number 4 in narayan gad and lost her security deposit and she was at number 4 see the bjp never bets in haryana on mass leaders they simply play on caste lines and that much for them there is no doubt okay. about it my bjp friend was saying there is something very interesting and let me just explain it and put it in perspective he said our previous president mr om prakash dankar was from bjp was sorry from jat community fully agreed but do you know one thing just before the lok sabha election why he was replaced because bjp can't afford going to lok sabha election with a jat president and to compensate that he put in mr ex president subhash barada in rajya sabha in rajya sabha so a jat president removed a saini brought in the same nayab saini and to replace dankhad from the pcc uh, okay bjp president 
सुभाष बराड़ावाद सेंट टू राज्यसभा दे आर बेसिकली ट्राइंग टू बैलेंस द होल थिंग लेट मी लेट मी जस्ट गिव यू थर्टी आई गॉट गिव द फाइनल वर्ड टू प्रोफेसर संजय कुमार बिकॉज कम्प्लीटली आउट ऑफ टाइम प्रोफेसर संजय कुमार मे बी नॉट फॉर द लोकसभा बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली इन द लोकसभा द मोदी फैक्टर इज अ प्लस फैक्टर uh if you look at the vote share itself it it gives you a, a clear picture the bjp's vote share in haryana when modi's on the ticket is well above 50% it's closer to 60% whereas when it is for the vidhan sabha election it is under 50% it's closer to the 40% mark so maybe not for the lok sabha but certainly for the vidhan sabha this change of chief minister with with 6 months to go for the lok uh, for the vidhan sabha election will that not have an impact does that not send a signal to the voter that look we don't have confidence in going with this same face 6 months down the line for the vidhan sabha election that's why we're changing him uh, zaka a very large number of indian voters vote for the party if i want to cite the number in the lok sabha election this is in the range of 60 to 65% if we look at the vidhan sabha election it is still in the range of 55 to 60% so what happens is that we the Pop, uh, voters who are loyal supporters of the party as i said a very large number of them vote only for the party so it doesn't it doesn't matter very much at this moment at least uh, during the last 5 7 years we have seen it doesn't matter very much whether the ruling party or the party which they want to vote have changed the chief minister whether they have changed a minister they have removed the minister brought in someone else and remember when they want to do that they try to you know look at all the permutation and combination so that the positive sig- signal is sent out to the people so uh, i don't think this is going to you know affect uh, adversely the bjp that look bjp has accepted that the government was not functioning well and that is why that, that is the reason they have been a, they okay. wanted to or they were forced to change the chief minister they were forced to change the government